You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only has Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. Your Twitter account... Thank you. For the record, it was well beyond Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, I'm sure it was. Well, I just don't respect her as a journalist. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. And she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever. It has not been easy for me. And, you know, I, I started off in Brooklyn. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. But, I mean, we live off Chinese manufacturing, whether we like it or not. That's because... When you say we, you are stupid. Very well. I mean, I don't know. Maybe people don't want my message. Maybe they want to stay mediocre. And if they do, they should put a politician in office because that's what's going to happen. You're smart enough to know that words are weapons. What do you weapons. mean smart enough? What does that mean? You're, you're, you're smart enough to know <laughs> that, words to are, that words are weapons. Well, I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I have to sort of say that because, you know, like somebody says, like, you know, you're smart enough. But go ahead. What they did, Jose, is a total default. They signed a five-year contract with no outs, and they said, oh, well. And by the way, Univision called me, and they apologized for what they're doing because they felt so stupid. I think I am a nice person. People that know me like me. Because China and all of these people, Mexico is the new China, by the way. Mexico is unbelievable what they're doing with cars and with uh, industry. They are taking our business like we're a bunch of babies. We don't have our best and our brightest negotiating for us. We have a bunch of losers. We I'll tell you what, I'd like guys like Jack Welch. I like guys like Henry Kravis. I'd love to bring my friend Carl Icahn. You know, I mean, we have people that are great. We have people that are better than any of their that negotiators. We don't use them, Joe. Yeah. We use people that are soft and weak and, frankly, stupid and incompetent. What? India, you know, you call up American Express and you talk to somebody on the phone. They have a, an accent. You say, where are you from? We're talking to them in India. Yeah. And I say, we can't do that ourselves. I have buildings. I bought it. I, I own the Bank of America building. Big, big deal. I own the Bank of America building in San Francisco. I deal with China. I have a great relationship with China. Business Week magazine has an article. What do the Chinese most want? One of the 10 things. Anything Trump. Miss Universe and Miss USA, I own it. They're here. They're going to really do a number on me. I'm challenging President Obama, my son Donald, my son Eric. Let's go, ladies. <laughs> Without the loss. You know who, who is, owns the New York Times? Is that Carlos Slim? He has a piece of it. Yeah, he yes. is the wealthiest man and in the world. And he's a good guy, I know him. Do you know Carlos yeah. Slim? Good guy. Mm -hmm. How much money is that guy worth? He's got a lot of money. I don't know what it is. It's got to be like a hundred Under billion. siege, yes, 60 billion or something. Oh my God. Under siege, yeah. but that's okay. And, and uh, what, what is it? It's none of my business, but what are you worth, a guy like you? <laughs> yeah. They... They say I'm only worth nine billion dollars. Nine billion? Yeah. Only worth nine. Oh, I don't billion. feel so good when you mention Carlos Slim. Yeah. Either. Would you like David? When Cameron, it was brought up, would no. you like him to withdraw the, the particular the comments that you're stupid, divisive, and wrong well, with your view about Muslims? Well, number one, I'm not stupid. Okay, I can tell you that right now. Uh, just the opposite. Number two, in terms of divisive, I don't think I'm a divisive person. I'm a unifier. Unlike our president now, I'm a unifier. I don't care about him. I mean, it doesn't make any difference to me about him. Let's see how he does. I mean, let's see if he's a good mayor. Are you offended by what he says? Yeah, I am, because he doesn't know me, never met me, doesn't know what I'm all about. I, I think they're very rude statements, uh, and frankly, tell him I will remember those statements. They're very nasty statements. It's fair to say that sometimes you exaggerate. I don't think I exaggerate any more than anybody else. I think that I have a great grasp of numbers. I have a great grasp of values. I'm worth many, many billions of dollars. Now that you're in second place in the polls, Politico runs a story quoting Republicans, including Ari Fleischer, the former Bush White House spokesman, calls you roadside accident. He tarnishes everyone, irresponsible, divisive, hurtful. Does that hurt your feelings? 
No, I mean, Ari is somebody that nobody respects and nobody has any respect for him. I'm surprised you even waste your time quoting. I'm going to make America great again. Politicians aren't going to do that. And everybody takes me very seriously. On the Mexican comments, why not say, maybe I went too far, poor choice of words, or even, I'm sorry? I don't have to say that. Look, the Mexican border is a sieve. People are pouring through our country, into our country. We don't know who they are, where they are. They come from all over the world, not Mexican. I employ thousands of Mexicans. I have, I've employed over the years many thousands of Mexicans. Right. I love the Mexican people. They're fantastic. Lived here in New York in the early 90s when the tabloids went haywire over your breakup with Ivana and your relationship with Marla Maples. When did this gets dredged up and people say, oh, Trump, he's not a good role model? Look, everybody knows me. I've had an amazing life. I've built an amazing business. And actually, they said, oh, he'd never say what his business is worth. It's actually a much higher number than the number I gave. Jobs back from China. I'm going to take jobs back from Mexico. By the way, Mexico is the new China. Mexico is killing us. What are we doing? We're losing our base. Our GNP is, it's, think of it, it's less than zero. That means we're getting smaller. And all these other countries are growing like, like we concerned about them than you're concerned about illegal Im immigrants coming in here and, and well, I'm concerned people. about everything I'm concerned about the country our country's going to hell you're for the Second Amendment do you have a gun I have the a license to have a gun yes I do do you own one yes I do do you use it gun range it's none of your business it's really none of your business so you will release your financials it, on Absolutely. time well, yeah I'm, we're gonna I think we're gonna have it on time in that's fact, eight days excuse from now me, excuse me <laughs> Donald Trump is now threatening to sue the network Univision after they pull the plug on their Spanish language coverage of the Trump-owned Miss USA pageant. I love the Mexican people. Two waiters came up to me tonight, Mr. Trump, we love you. I said, where are you from? Mexico. I said, that's great, I love you too. <laughs> I do. I love Mexico. I've had tremendous relationships with people in Mexico. But I said, we need a strong border. I said, we need a wall. Party now about what role things he says should play. You've spoken favorably about him. He's, he's talking this week about the environment. Should a potential president listen to what the Pope says about global warming? Well, I'm not so sure. Look, I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's really a terrific person. I, I love his stance. He's so different. He's very refreshing. Uh, but I, I think you want to listen to science. You want to listen maybe to your own gut, maybe your own experience. I'm not sure you have to necessarily listen to the Pope. Look, it's not a question of interest. I, I feel very confident. I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I was a good student. It was, it's like one of the hardest schools in the world to get into. I then do a book called The Art of the Deal. It's the number one selling business book of all time or just about. You may say, oh, there was one that sold two. But, you know, just about. It's still in the schools, everything else. I then do a show called The Apprentice. In the meantime, I build this incredible empire. It's got a tremendous net worth, very little debt. All, and then I hear some pundit or some person say, he doesn't deserve to be on the stage with a senator. The senator is nothing. And I'm not saying, or senators are nothing. I'm saying certain people are zeros. Words are weapons. <laughs> so you have to have some form of collegiality if you're president of the United States. I get, I'm a, I get along with everybody. Okay. I get along with the Chinese. By the way, people think I don't like China. I love China. I sold an apartment for $55 million to a Chinese gentleman. A presidential candidate. Any concern that being a presidential candidate could be bad for business? It could be. I mean, I really don't care. The Most corporations steer clear of politics because they know that by taking one side, they're going to alienate half of America. As a businessman, does it make business sense to be so outspoken? It doesn't matter to me if it does, if it doesn't. You do know really? Hillary Clinton. You've said you've liked her. You got along with her well when she was New York senator. Thank you all so much. Personally, what do you like best Look, about I Hillary I get along Clinton? with everybody. That's what we need. We need somebody that can, but they'll do what I tell them to do. If the state of Hawaii says this is official, he was born in Hawaii on this date, here it is, why do you deny that? A lot of people do not think it was an authentic certificate. How can you A say that if the state won't this... report it, Wolf? But many people do not think it was authentic. His mother was not in the hospital. There were many other things that came out. And frankly, if you would report it accurately, I think you'd probably get better ratings than you're getting, which are pretty small. Our current president came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. In fact, I'll go a step further. The people that went to school with him, they don't even know, they never saw him. They don't know who he is. I have no record. Can't be criticized. Wonderful guy. He's a nice man. But there was no record. Nothing to criticize. 
He didn't go in wars. He didn't go in battles. He didn't beat this one, that one, have enemies all over the place. Nobody knew who the hell he was. Uh, I can just say this. More people are in this country right now illegally than ever before. I will build a better wall, and I'll build it for cheaper, and Mexico will pay, if that's your next question. Yeah, how do you get Mexico to because pay? Because they are oh. ripping us left and right. But Mexico. Well, how do you make By the pay? way, I love the Mexican people. Many Mexican people work for me. Many Mexico people I do business with, they purchase things for me, like apartments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I have great relationships with Mexico and with the Mexican people. I love the Mexican people. I love their spirit. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They're laughing at us, at our stupidity. And now they're beating us economically. They are not our friend. And these are the best and the finest. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems. And they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. You had some big successes in the business world, but you've also had some big failures. And let's go straight. No, I don't think I've had big failures. Uh, Donald Trump has always been very, very successful. And so when you say failures, I don't think I've had failures, but let's go ahead, ask me about a couple. Okay, Trump hotels and casinos filed for bankruptcy protection three times in six years. Okay, let me explain it to you. Very simple. Isn't that a I, failure? Not really. I mean, look, it worked out very well for me. It was very successful. I then levered the company. I took it public. So I had a, a relatively small piece of the company. And what happened is Philadelphia... Wait a you were chairman of the board. Excuse me. You were chairman of the board. Uh, I was chairman, but I didn't run the company. I had nothing to do with running the company. Management ran You were paid $2 million a year. Excuse me. I didn't run the company. I'm just telling you. So what were you paid $2 million dollars a year for? Excuse me. Because of my genius, okay? Islamic terrorism is eating up large portions of the Middle East. They become rich. I'm in competition with them. They just built a hotel in Syria. Can you believe this? They built a hotel. I will be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. I tell you that.